Uh, next up, the ever amazing Claire Brown, uh, Dead Inspiring, How to Encourage Secondary Schools to Engage with Natural Science Collections. Gosh, how do you follow that? I'm not sure. <laughs> right. Um, thank you so much for inviting me here today, and it's obviously lovely to be here and to chat to you all. I'm going to speak about a project that we ran in Leeds called Dead Inspiring, to see what I did there. Um, we uh, did all sorts of different things, which I will talk about in the talk, but I'm also going to speak about a general overview of how this particular interaction, so encouraging secondary schools and natural science collections to work together, works, um, and also what various studies and research has been carried out into how we can improve this relationship. Okay. So um, there is quite a lot of studies and received wisdom about this relationship, about natural science collections and secondary schools working together. Um, before I start, I would like to say that I am probably teaching most of you to suck eggs, but hopefully some of this will be useful to some of you. So please bear with me. Um, the uh, received wisdom I'm going to talk about is uh, from the Museums and Schools Programme, so uh, funded in England by the Department of Education and uh, Arts Council England. And it's mainly from this publication, which is um, the Group for Education and Museums, Museums and School Working Together document. So we reference this a lot when we were designing this project. So um, it's anecdotally and um, I suppose proven that many museums do struggle to attract secondary schools to their sites. We are overrun with primary schools, which is fantastic, but secondary schools have always been a little bit of a difficult nut to crack. Um, these are for various reasons, which I'll go into. For example, funding for experience out of the classroom is re is um, being reduced. And of course, the cost of living crisis uh, is not helping that. And also, um, off, -time -table visit, off timetable visits present logistical problems. So obviously, you've got a big cohort of year sevens, um, you know, 250 students in one year spread across seven science lessons in a week, then it's very difficult to organise them all to come to a museum. And one of the big problems with these three things is that um, this sets up a, a really sad spiral where um, secondary schools just don't uh, remember that we exist. They don't have any tradition of visiting us or using us. And it's inherent and beholden to the um, marketing departments of our museums to get in touch with the secondary schools and reinvigorate their interest in us, which is not helping anyone at all. So um, in this document, Museums and Schools Working Together, they have various recommendations for how we might address this. Um, so I'm going to go through them. Some of them are very obvious, so please just bear with me. Um, the first one is obviously engaging teachers first. So, um, for example, you could do this through a relaxed evening teacher CPD meeting. The problem with relaxed evening teacher CPD meetings is all these lovely teachers come, they get all enthusiastic and um, engaged with what you're doing, and then they have to go back to their schools and sell it to their senior management team who haven't attended your relaxed teacher CPD team, uh, CPD evening. And so it's obviously um, really helpful if you can get the uh, management involved too. Um, for example, the VNA runs successful teacher sanctuary events. So they have um, evenings where you work out how to use the collections, recognize the collections, uh, the curriculum links, and also network with other teachers. Another one is partner with the Great British School Trip. This is funded by Hyundai, and they will backfill um, teacher posts for covering um, uh, when your school is out on a trip. If you need teachers to go with you, which obviously do, then um, the uh, Great British School Trip will help fund that. Um, the other thing that might be useful is targeting cohorts, which is what we did in Leeds. So we particularly looked at educating young women and um, non-binary uh, pupils in entomology. Um, so this was um, reducing the amount of school kids that we actually um, wanted to speak to in the school. Um, the problem with this is that you have to be very careful that you know the difference between positive action and positive discrimination. I didn't, um, but I wrote a document for Leeds on the difference. Um, and if anyone wants to see that or um, speak to me about it, please do. Basically, um, you need to make sure that you are um, uh, use, uh, targeting people who are um, uh, have protective characteristics. But I won't go into all the details of that. Um, please come and talk to me afterwards if you would like to know more. Right. Um, 
The other crucial thing that this is, uh, document recommends is adopting a science capital approach. And science capital was um, something that was uh, researched and looked into by UCL and the Science Museum uh, and King's College. Uh, and it basically talks about how much each of us has experienced and knows about science. So obviously every um, positive interaction you have with science or STEM or people working in it helps your science capital. And it also, um, the more uh, better your science capital you have, the more likely you are to see STEM as a useful and important in your life. And also it use, is used to address inequalities in STEM uh, participation. So um, in museums terms, basically they're talking about creating activities um, that are relatable and relevant, for example, <laughs> using diversity of role models, putting human stories at the center, using appropriate language and vocabulary and signage and materials, um, promoting conversation. And my absolute favorite bit of this is shifting focus from transferring facts to building skills. So for example, here, they use science capital and the research was found in science capital to change their paper-based trails. So instead of running around the museum collecting facts um, and then reporting back to your peers, they actually wanted to um, use their paper-based trails to um, explore how your skills might be improved through exploration, similar to obviously what they were doing at Norwich, and also sharing ideas by talking. Um, again, just running through these very quickly. So these are all pretty obvious. Make sure you link to the national curriculum when you're designing things, uh, nurture a sense of belonging, use real world issues. So obviously um, using topics that people know about are much more successful in reaching new audiences rather than um, coming in straight from uh, brand new stuff. Um, and also establish cross-curricular learning. So all this is absolutely lovely and completely brilliant, but what we discovered in Leeds, what you really need to engage secondary schools is grit and luck. <laughs> so um, Dead Inspiring was our topic, uh, our project that we did um, over the last few years. Our plan was to empower young women in science by using Leeds's insect collections and um, I guess I'm not proud in that uh, when a part of my collection hasn't been looked at for a while for a project and I go and choose it and then I find a topic that someone will fund to make sure it's uh, get some cataloging done in the collection. So it was the entomology's turn this time. Um, we were very kindly funded by the Esme Fairburn Collections Fund. So that's administered through the Museums Association. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, we ran from 2019 to 2022. Uh, and we employed an uh, assistant curator, or we're going to intend to, we had a big volunteer program planned, we're going to do lots of cataloguing, and we're also going to have a big school engagement program. However, you can see from the dates that we were dumped on massively from above by a particular virus that got completely involved, and we didn't manage to do half of it, but anyway. Um, so what we actually did, what actually happened, is that we did manage to employ an assistant curator for two years, um, Milo Phillips, who's up in Edinburgh at the moment. Uh, we managed a bit of cataloguing. We ran a small volunteer program, but we were very much stymied by COVID. COVID. Um, coming out of COVID, we looked at how we could engage secondary schools um, and managed to deliver myself and our education team um, a programme events in the autumn term of 2022. And also we employed um, using the extra year of Milo's um, job that he didn't use up uh, to employ a education company called the STEM Project. And they delivered our spring term 2023 school programme. So uh, in order to get a response, first of all, from schools, when going back to that non-tradition of using natural science collections, um, I mean, we initially, it was impossible to get hold of anyone. The odd email here and there didn't make any difference. What you had to do is completely badger them all the time, constant sort of email bombing and ringing them up and getting um, someone to respond to us. Because there are, you know, major channels you can get to, to into secondary schools in Leeds, but would anyone reply to us unless we repeatedly badgered them? No. Um, I would also, going back to luck, finding the right person. So the minute, the second that, I, that email landed in the inbox of a teacher who was engaged and enthusiastic and who really thought this was something that they could use for their pupils and it was really exciting. They got straight back to you, never heard of us, how wonderful, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and we'd give them a tour of the museum and the collections and everything and it was all absolutely brilliant. So the repeated badgering leads to 
the luck of finding somebody. Um, so I can't repeat that enough of, of basically how we managed to make this project swing and make it work. Um, lastly, obviously offering free sessions is incredibly helpful. No school is going to pay uh, for seven. We, I think it was seven, I was speaking to a secondary school um, teacher, uh, seven uh, lessons every year. Um, and then we were charging £60 a session. So we had to have project funding to offer free sessions, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so uh, we engage, once we've got hold of some teachers and we engaged teachers, it's not rocket science, but you have to build and maintain relationships. So as soon as someone showed an interest, obviously get back to them and talk to them and also harp on and on and on about the fact that we have natural science collections. Mm -hmm. The major reason on a survey that we did as to why uh, secondary schools visit museums is that it fits in with their school's art and creativity culture. They had no idea <laughs> that we existed as a science institution whatsoever and so going on and on and on about the existence of natural science collections is obviously crucial um, and just a word about timetable cover in my experience and it's entirely just what happened in Leeds we didn't have any problem with timetable cover so um, they are really happy for someone to come in we ended up not inviting school groups to the museum instead we took entomology collections into classrooms and there was just absolutely no problem they were so thrilled to have us in um, all the teachers and staff were backfilled it, all the t all the schools we went to quite a few um, managed to rearrange it completely you know as a, a huge benefit to their pupils so timetable cover I don't think personally is a particularly big factor in it so dead and sorry I absolutely love this photo from one of our school's Instagram accounts nobody's looking at me they couldn't care less what I'm saying I've got this whopping great spider surely it's the most exciting thing they've ever seen and they're talking to their friends anyway um <laughs> We did uh, 55 minute sessions in schools, which was obviously great fun for me. I really enjoyed going and talking about entomology endlessly. We managed to cover 907 pupils over 38 sessions in two terms. So again, repeated badgering, we got them all. Um, and then at the end of each of our um, lessons, we did a bit of a feedback thing. And I'm delighted to report that 51% of female and non-binary pupils said that they were more interested in a career in science, STEM or entomology afterwards. Um, which was wonderful, and also building on this idea of getting a tradition going of um, getting secondary schools into or connecting with museums, then 95% of teachers said that they were more likely to engage with Leeds museums and galleries in the future, which was obviously absolutely fantastic. Um, so that's like, I've taken you up to the high of the talk, and now we're going to go down the other side of it. <laughs> so what next? Well, absolutely nothing happened. So um, <laughs> we have delivered our project. We have ticked that box. We have um, taught these, you know, 907 pupils in Leeds will have the best time wanting to be entomologists. Absolutely fantastic. But now we've run out of money and that's the end of our project. So we had no further take up. And that's mainly because of our staff time. So at Leeds, we have uh, two minutes left at least we have um just me and i'm two days a week at the moment we have no other science staff uh for that collection um and also again i was going back to the money it costs to um get our education team to go into schools in leeds however going back up again however um it's clear that schools really want what we have to offer. Everyone was biting my hand off for all sorts of different things. We could link it with this, we could do it with this, with our year 10s, we could do this. It was it was constant and it was absolutely lovely, but um, it does it is, it is not as easy as I've necessarily sort of um, put out there. Uh, proven to be value, as our statistics have shown, many perceived bar barriers are overcomable. It's not just the timetabling, it's also actually the um, travel to the museum. One of the schools I was talking to said, oh, it's no problem going down. It doesn't cost us anything to do a, a school trip because we have minibuses. And, um, and they were very happy to use it and didn't necessarily cost them very much money. And also it doesn't fundamentally cost very much to take objects into secondary schools. Yes, it costs staff time, and the reason that our uh, museum service charges schools to um, take objects or use their use, uh, you know, have run workshops in the museum is to limit the uptake. So you can't say, oh, well, I'm going to do that one for free and that one for free, but I can't, we haven't got time to do that one for free. So the actual cost of taking things into schools isn't that much. So um, I would encourage everyone to look at their, um, look at how you might fund it. 
But also, um, we were, were, were very, very lucky that we were funded by the Esme Fairburn Collections Fund. So there are funders out there. Wrap it up now. <laughs> this is my last slide. Um, <laughs> so uh, the Esme Fairburn Collections Fund um, are great funders in the UK. And um, I would encourage you to get in touch with Sarah at the Museums Association. She actually gave a talk at our conference in Dublin about how she doesn't get applications from natural science collections. It's a real problem for them. And so she's encouraging everybody, please, to get in touch with her. She's absolutely lovely and we'll have a good chat with you about your project ideas. And apparently the board of the Esme Fairbone Collections um, uh, Fund uh, are very, very interested in ecological and environmentally friendly projects. So please, please get in touch. And if anyone has any questions, that's my email address. Uh, we have time for questions, if anybody has any questions. Lovely. Uh, do we have a microphone? I'm just gesticulating. Lovely. So the question was, um, we pitched this project at Young Women and Non-Binary Pupils, and um, uh, you asked whether we pitched the whole, we delivered the whole thing to a whole classroom. No, the schools were, all the schools, this isn't one school, were very happy to remove their um, female non-binary pupils out of their classes and put them into a special classroom for us. And that's also because the studies that we did before we pitched this project and before we asked Esme Fairburn for the, um, for the money, uh, did talk a lot about um, how female pupils in particular, I'm seeing if I can find my actual quotes, um, really really benefit from um yeah here we go so girls benefit from cal collaboration with peers during stem experiences and actually removing them um from the lads <laughs> in 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 um stem situations uh, they often lack confidence in their stem abilities and may avoid participation out of fear of failing so creating low pressure environments by putting them all together actually was a piece of research we drew on to get the money to deliver this so yeah One more, anyone else? Can you wait? Hi, I'm very good to talk. I just wanted to say that I'm really good by the sessions. I just wanted to like, think it in fact to your question class. So, like, what was it that you did in the session? Did it involve like having class, or was it just like a job? Or was it like what? Okay, so to just repeat that for people online, what do we actually do in the sessions? Um, we have a very standard way of uh, running our education sessions, sessions in Leeds, so you get a bit of a talk at the beginning, and then we have a carousel of three different activities. So we uh, did things like work out a key um, using actual specimens, so we you know got them all to um, split them up physically, so the uh, specimens that I took out were in little perspex bo uh, boxes on plaster's oat, so they could be easily moved around. Um, there was a little bit about how you name species, all sorts of different things. So um, I am not an education specialist, but our education team with me helped design a workshop that would um, split everything up so that they were constantly, constantly entertained. We even had uh, Erica's, um, uh, I don't know, it was, a, it was a short from the Natural History Museum that we played about a five minute thing about how wonderful flies were, which worked really well, and everyone, especially to young women, which was great. Okay, thank you so much, everyone.